a reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord they will flourish in the courts of our God A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this, which is corruptible, clothes itself in incorruptibility, and this, which is mortal, clothes itself in immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord.
shine like lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum, Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria Tibi Domine. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit for every tree is known by its fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verbum Domini. I first of all would like to invite our media audience to join us for the Holy Hour for Healing and Justice this evening here in this chapel at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central Time. We'll be praying for the church, for healing and justice. And tonight we're going to be especially invoking the help of Our Lady of the Angels, St. Michael the Archangel, and the angels to assist the church in this time. So please do join us, and if you live in this area, Please come here to the Irondale Chapel to join us in praying for the church at this time, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central Time. You know, we had uh, trees mentioned in three of today's readings in the book of Sirach, our first reading in Psalm 92, a psalm that we sang today as well as in today's gospel. And I couldn't help but think of what is considered the most quoted American poem, Trees, by Alfred Joyce Kilmer. And he was a man who lived in the early 1900s. He had five children, and when their youngest daughter, Rose, was diagnosed with polio, he and his family, in fact, converted to the Catholic faith. And you can see in his poems his devotion to his faith, his love of the Lord, including in this poem, Trees. Unfortunately, during World War I, he was killed by a sniper's bullet in 1918, but is one of those American poets that is well known. 
But I'd like to read uh, that poem to you today, Trees, to tie it in in some way with our readings today. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. So it's a beautiful little short uh, poem, and I like that very much how a tree, he sees it as only God can make something so beautiful, so lovely as a tree, and how she looks at God all day and lifts her arms to pray. Now, poetry is something that we also find in the scriptures. So we find a lot of prose, just recounting of events. We have historical books like Genesis and Exodus, Joshua, Numbers and Leviticus, which give us the historical events of salvation history. We also have the prophetic literature, like Isaiah, Ezekiel, uh, Daniel, and Jeremiah, and the minor prophets as well. And so they would call people back to God, to return to God, but they also would prophesy about one who was to come. In fact, it's said there are some 300 prophecies that are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And as Bishop Sheen said, if anyone really did come from God, the least that God could do is foretell his coming, prophesy his coming as we have in the prophets. But then in our daily readings, we have been hearing from the wisdom literature and these are the books from Job to Sirach. So we've been having this last week during our daily readings from the book of Sirach as well as today on this Sunday reading. And so the first of that wisdom literature is the book of Job, which asks the question, why do the innocent suffer? And it's a question that ultimately isn't going to be answered until Jesus Christ comes, the innocent one, who suffered death on the cross. And that our own sharing is a sharing in his suffering for the redemption of the world. Then we have the book of Psalms. That's the most quoted uh, book we're most familiar with. We hear it at every mass. In every sacrament, we generally have one of the Psalms, 150 Psalms associated with David. Then we have four books that are associated with Solomon, the son of David, the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, which begins vanity of vanities, all things are vanity, pointing to the passing of all things. Then his song of Solomon, which is a love song. It's a, a song of longing, of joy, of love between the bridegroom and the bride that many have interpreted like St. Bernard of Clairvaux has written a whole commentary on this book as the divine lover. So Christ is the bridegroom. He described himself as such. And we who are members of the church are his bride. And then the wisdom of Solomon. And then finally the book of Sirach, which was written around 200 years before Christ. And it's said of the book of Sirach that it is a summary really of salvation history. It kind of summarizes all of that has gone before it. And this was a book that was very important to the early church. It was often used for moral instruction, teaching how one is to live. And so what you find in this book are things that talk about guiding young men, how they are to live, how they are to live virtuously, 
to be guided by wisdom. You know, I studied engineering and we had classes on physics, mathematics, and engineering, electronics. I didn't have any classes on wisdom. <laughs> so it was a lot of technical knowledge, which is good and valuable, but it didn't teach me how am I supposed to live? What's the goal of life? What's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? How am I to live fully in a way that's pleasing to God and have the fullness of life? That's wisdom. That's wisdom. So the book of Sirach begins with that kind of instruction, poetry regarding wisdom, its value in life, leading us to the fullness of joy and peace and so on. But then it covers practical things like speech and friendship, the importance of refraining from sin. How do you deal with people in different walks of life on self-control? How am I to control my speech? Marriage vows, evaluating others, coping with the troubles of life, and so on. And so this was a book that was very important in the early church, and that's why it has the name also Ecclesiasticus, which means the little church book. It was used to instruct those who were coming to embrace the faith, giving them different moral lessons. And I know uh, one of our people here that works at EWTN, this was a couple of years ago, he said that he had finally read through the book of Sirach and he was really found it enriching in his life. He had never really considered this book. Maybe it's something you want to do during this upcoming season of Lent. So it is a book um, that's part of that wisdom literature, literature where we have more poetic expressions um, of how we are to live our life, Proverbs and so on. And even our Lord himself, we can see this in um, different ways, relations to what's in the book of Sirach and also the teachings of the New Testament. So the books of Sirach says, give to one who asks. Likewise, our Lord would say that. The book of Sirach 23 speaks against vain repetition in prayer. Our Lord speaks of that, Matthew 6, 9. Sirach addresses God as Father in prayer, Sirach 23. The Lord in the Lord's prayer. Do not hold grudges or face the punishment of God, Sirach 28. Likewise, our Lord says we must forgive those who have and debts to us. And even today, this word that our Lord, or when we're told that Jesus told his disciples a parable, this parable is not really like the prodigal son, the good Samaritan, telling a story and relating it to life, but there are little questions, riddles, things to get us thinking. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Won't they both fall into a pit? So choose your teacher. Choose someone who has this, this wisdom, someone who is um, righteous before God. So every disciple will be like his teacher. They often speak, would speak to Jesus as teacher, master. Every disciple will be like his teacher. And in this too, it's not just that we are called to faith in the Lord, but to be his disciples, to sit at his feet. It's why we have the scripture readings at every mass. We're sitting at the Lord's feet. We're listening to his word. We're wanting to form our lives according to how he teaches us. And then he speaks about that every tree is known by its fruit. What kind of fruit do we, uh, do we bring forth in our lives? And I think that there's three ways that we bear fruit in our lives, for good or for evil. What are three ways that we bear fruit in our lives? One, we can think about, of course, our actions. Do our actions express charity? concern, care for the other? Are we doing things that are enriching the lives of others, not just living for ourselves? So our actions themselves, and our Lord said, 
in Matthew 25, that we'd be judged on what we had done to the least of our brothers or neglected to do to them. So our actions we want to bear good fruit. Also our words, and that's an emphasis today in today's first reading from the book of Sirach. A fruit of a tree shows the care it had, it has had. So too does one's speech dis disclose the bent of one's mind. So what's coming out of our mouths? Well, it's first been formed in our minds, in our thoughts, in our hearts. And then it's expressed in our words. So we want our words too to bring forth good fruit of praise, like the Psalms, of thanksgiving, of instruction, of expressing love, encouragement, generosity. That's what we want our speech to be used for too, not to tear down or to be used for evil purposes, but only use it for good. That's a good fruit that we can bear in our lives. And then our thoughts themselves. You know, there's a story in the life of St. Francis of Assisi where he went to apologize to one of his friars because he had thought badly of him. So we realize that our thoughts too can impact the way we, if we treat others and in a spiritual sense, it can affect them as well. So even our thoughts, we want, it to, want to be rooted in charity. So this can be something for us to consider as we enter the season of Lent this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It's not a holy day of obligation, but of course, everyone is encouraged to take part in this beginning of this holiest time of the year. A time where we really take stock. What kind of fruit am I bearing in my life? What are my actions producing? What is my mouth producing? What are my th thoughts? May my thoughts be pleasing to you, one of the, one of the Psalms says. And during this season of Lent, to root out any evil fruit that we are bearing in our actions, our words, our thoughts. And that instead to replace that, to always be bearing good fruit. I wanted to say a word too about using our words for praise. Because when we praise God, what did we say and sing in our Psalm today, Psalm 92? Lord, it is good to give you thanks to give thanks to you. It's good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high. Why is that good? Because it's living in the reality of God is God. And we who are his creatures are fulfilled in praising him and acknowledging him. You know, before mass, I heard the choir as they were rehearsing and there was a burst of laughter. And I remember that too in my own time in the choir back at St. Paul's in Worthington. It was a joyful thing. It was an uplifting thing. There was joy, there was some laughter because it's good to give thanks to the Lord, to praise his name. That's what our mouth is for. One of the reasons it's for to praise the Lord, to thank him. So when you join in the singing of the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei and the different hymns that we will sing this day, it's a way in which you're using your mouth to praise him. It's so good to thank him, to praise him. And what happens is that your own heart becomes changed in doing that. And it actually becomes more filled with goodness. And your words become more life-giving bearing that good fruit. Finally, and I close with this, with another poem of Joyce Kilmer, where he talks about a young woman who did just this. And the title of this poem is called The Singing Girl. See if you know who this is, The Singing Girl. There was a little maiden in blue and silver dressed. She sang to God in heaven and God within her breast. 
It flooded me with pleasure. It pierced me like a sword when this young maiden sang, my soul doth magnify the Lord. The stars sing all together and hear the angels sing. But they said they had never heard so beautiful a thing. St. Mary and St. Joseph and St. Elizabeth, pray for us poets now and at the hour of death.